Now we can talk about the limit comparison test, which is, in my view, an improvement on the comparison test. It serves a slightly different purpose, so don't be too confused by the similar names. Uh, in this video, we're going to motivate, introduce, and apply the limit comparison test to test the convergence or divergence of a series. So let's think about a concrete example. Does the series n equals 1 to infinity of n plus 3 to the n or n plus 2 to the n converge or diverge? And so here's the thing. We want to continue to use our intuition to guide us in whether we confirm that it converges or diverges, right? Our instinct might, uh, might tell us um, that it should diverge because the dominant part is this part right here. So the 3 to the n over 2 to the n. Similar to the previous video where we explored that series that had the 6 to the n over 5 to the n, this b to the n or sorry, b sub n equals 3 over 2 to the n gives us a geometric series that does diverge, okay? And the presence of this n plus and the, the two n's in the numerator, that seems like it shouldn't give us too much, right? Um, so our reasoning here is that maybe we can show <clears throat> that eventually, I'm going to be saying that word a lot, a sub n is close to b sub n, a sub n being the terms of our original series. And what does that help us do? Because eventually a sub n is close to being b sub n, then we know that eventually the series looks like a geometric series, and so it must diverge. So here's how we can show that. In the limit, as n goes to infinity, of a sub n over b sub n is going to be taking a comparison of the limits of the terms, and we hope that we can use our, our uh, tools from working with sequences to bear this out. So here's how we can do this. So I'm going to pull out 3 to the n from the numerator of the top fraction. That's going to give us n over 3 to the n plus 1, all over 2 to the n over n to the 2 to the n plus 1, all over 3 to the n over 2 to the n. Okay, And this term right here will cancel with this term. Of course, because n is so large, um, these are going to explode, right? But uh, by L'Hopital's rule, we'll be able to cancel them out. So the limit as n approaches infinity of n over 3 to the n plus 1 over n to the 2n plus 1. Well, think back to when we talked about dominance in Calc 1. And we said that as we were examining functions um, and taking their limits as, we, as x goes to infinity, dominance theory is given give us an uh, intuition about what functions grow faster. So 3 to the n, 2 to the n, those are exponential functions. They are certainly much faster than linear functions. So a, a linear function in n is going to converge slow, much slower to infinity than 3 to the n. And that suggests that in the limit, this will reduce to 0. And so the limit we, are gonna sh we have shown is equal to 1. So eventually, a sub n is like b sub n in the sense that the limit as n goes to infinity of the fraction of the two is equal to 1. So here's why this helps us, right? Since for some n large enough, the tail um, n equals to n plus 1 to infinity 
of n plus 3 to the n over n plus 2 to the n is basically the same as the series 3 to the n over 2 to the n. This diverges, so this also diverges. Okay, and it doesn't matter that we started at some large n uh, because this is the tail. And so whatever happens to the tail is going to apply also to the beginning of the series. So really, the series is going to diverge. Okay, so we've shown our, so the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n plus 3 to the n over n plus 2 to the n diverges. Okay, awesome. In fact, we could have used the divergence test for this one, but we're not going to get into that. So what's the limit comparison test? The theorem that states the limit comparison test says we are going to suppose, again, that our series that we're comparing to each other have only positive terms. Um, then, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n, so the the, um, the fraction of the terms, if that limit equals c for c a finite uh, positive real number. Then either both series converge or they both diverge. So what we want to think about here is that their fates are linked in a sense, okay? So this is just a brief justification. This is not, you should not take this as proof whatsoever. Um, proof was given in the textbook, even if it's hard to follow. Um, but let's just think about it intuitively, right? So intuitively, thinking about just the C equals one case, right? Limit as n goes to infinity of A sub n over B sub n equals one can roughly mean A sub n is approximately equal to B sub n eventually. There's that word again eventually. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to pause this.